All right, you know, with how difficult he is to unlock, I think it's about time we actually played as Dry Bowser. In order to get him, you have to get at least one star on the main four cups in 150cc, which is a lot harder than you might think in Mario Kart Wii. Okay, uh, let's try the off-roader today. Off-roader's... Off oof, that is a bad drift stat. But its handling is pretty solid. And plus it matches Dry Bowser. It's got the horns on it and everything. Uh, yeah, we'll do manual. Part of me wonders if automatic drift is actually worth trying out if it's radically different, because I've heard it could be, but I don't know. I'll probably never end up trying it out or I'll do it off offline sometime. Anyways, today we are on the 1-Up Cup. It looks like we've got Stargaze Summit, Sea Stadium, GCN Dino Dino Jungle, and N64 Calamari Desert. All right. Two oldies and two newies. Let's see what they're like. And hopefully the off-roader will be able to take them. So, well, I guess we're starting things off with Stargaze Summit, and this looks really nice. Love the background. Yeah, this is a pretty looking level. All right. I'm excited. This looks like Frappy Snowland if it was actually interesting. Shots fired. Mini map doesn't look too crazy either. I think I'm blowing up. No, I'm not. I get the big boost. Woohoo! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, there's the DK Summit music. Like the snowflake power up. So, whoa, whoa. Oh, so we've got a mix of. It's like a mix of Frappy Snow Land and Sherbet Land. That's cool. That turn is pretty tight in the off-roader. I like the snowmen though. I like the trees. This looks very nice. It can be hard to tell with like the off-road stuff from Sherbet Land which way you actually need to go in order to proceed. So there's a little bit of a foul on that one. But otherwise it's a very nice looking course. And wow, I am kind of stinky right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Move it. Oh, for real. At least I didn't fall there. Wow! I'm so far behind. I feel like I haven't been racing that badly. Oh, here we go. Everyone's kind of clustered up. That's, that was why. Okay, here we go. Uh oh, just power up. Ugh. Okay, that turn... I think on lap three, I'm going to try not tricking on that ramp. And I'll probably be able to get a drift out. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. Don't you dare throw bananas over my cart. Keep throwing bananas at me. Wow, they are really desperately trying to hit me with those banana peels. Yeah, like, the off-road that slows you down to a crawl looks indistinguishable from the off-road that you're, like, you're supposed to go on. Okay, I'm not tricking over this one. There we go. I kind of like how there are some ramps that you actually don't want to trick off of. It, ma it makes it, the game a little bit more dynamic and less just like, oh, trick off of everything. I was wondering when that would come in. I knew the shrink was happening sooner or later because we haven't had one yet. Wow, all it took was a gold mushroom to give me first place. Wow, the camera kind of screwed up there. Not sure if that's just the stage being built in a weird way or if it was me accidentally happening to release the look backwards button at the exact same time that I crossed the finish line, but that's kind of crazy. 15 points for the count. And by extension, Dry Bowser. That was a fun one. I really enjoyed that level. Very, very cool. Sea Stadium. Not really a fan of the underwater levels, but this looks like it's like a roller coaster going over Sea World. So, oh, interest. No, this. So this is like Mario Circuit, but on the water. Okay. All right. Ooh, wait. Oh, that's a complicated map. Actually, this kind of reminds me of the Star Wars Episode One Racer. Uh, Aquilaris levels. With 
play the Aquilaris Classic, Sunken City, and Bumpy's Breakers. So those, you know, like, the planet was underwater. And there was, like, a racetrack built around it. Okay, this is interesting. This, yeah, this definitely reminds me of, like, a Mario Circuit or, like, a Wario Stadium kind of track. Or drifting. I, whoa, my gosh, I was not expecting that. Whoa, what the heck? Okay. I don't know what I was expecting, but it absolutely was not that. That was insane. Thought I was playing Mario Kart 8 for a second there. So we got the two separate paths, and they all kind of meet up here. Oh, no. That's a... Okay, this course is... Looks simple, but it's kind of nuts, actually. Also, this is definitely battle music. Ha! Red shells can't follow me over jumps. This is not Mario Kart 8. Okay, this course, I, I kind of dig this course. I actually kind of dig it. Yeah, it's like a simple road, but the aesthetic is cool, and they actually execute these crazy jumps and drifts in a really cool way. Uh-oh. Banana peel. Actually, I'm not sure if the hit a banana peel to avoid the blue shell trick is in this or if that was in Mario Kart 8. That's a trick you can do in Mario Kart 8, though, and it's definitely a cool one. Okay, next lap, I want to go on the left side to see if it's any different. Okay, ow, okay. Really? Now, really? Really? Wow, all right, that was a lot that happened in a short amount of time. Oh, okay, gotta make sure we're turning. Man, this course is crazy, but I love it. I have to remember this one. Sea Stadium? Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, when we go over the loop-de-loop, -loop, I want to go to the left side this lap. Gotta remember that. Yeah, I love this one. This really reminds me of, like, a Wario Stadium on steroids. Really, really cool course. It's familiar and yet totally different at the same time. All right, yeah, so if we go this way. And, like, again, the loop-de-loops -loops there, normally when they try these weird, crazy, like, inversions on the tracks, they don't work very well. Those actually work pretty well. Power up. Just like old times. Yeah, skip the half pipe, got a little extra speed. Yes. Okay, yeah, I love that course. That course is great. And I know the other two courses, so this is looking like one banner of a circuit. The two new courses were both awesome. I like Dino Dino Jungle, and I love Calamari Desert, so this will be great. Unless they did some drastic changes to these next two stages that I'm not anticipating. Like, this should be fantastic. Here we go, GCN Dino Dino Jungle. Double Dash had a very large amount of really great tracks. There's only like two or three that I think are actually like just not great. And even those like they're still good. They're just like less good than the rest of the Double Dash courses. The worst you can say is like yeah Mario Circuit in that game is pretty boring but like what else is it? It's Mario Circuit. We even get the original Dino Dino Jungle music because it has the same music as DK Mountain. Man, that part's so much easier when you're, you don't have to do a double dash turning. All right, Diddy. There's no way Diddy has a boost. Did he just drive off the cliff? 
He went the way of the shortcut, but you can't take the shortcut if you don't have some kind of boost. Unless they change that in this version of the track. Alright, yeah. I like this. This is a good adaptation of uh, Dino Dino Jungle. I love the dinosaurs they added in. We'll try to explore the different parts of the track on each lap, because there's a couple different ways to go. So, like, can we go between the dino's legs? He doesn't move his legs in this version, which is a bit of a shame. There should still be the secret path in the Yeah, here we go. Oh, yeah, that way is also much easier to take with the Wii steering compared to Double Dash steering. Double Dash had weird steering. Yeah, yeah, you, you're not going along that path quickly if you don't have a bunch of or like a star. No, 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 please, no! That's okay, I was able to accelerate again. Hey, Mr. Dino. I forgot how great this course is. I normally view Dino Dino Jungle as one of the weaker Double Dash courses, but it's still, like, very fun. Yeah, in Double Dash, the bar is a little higher for the courses, just because of how many good ones there are. And honestly, I would say the same for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Very few courses, proportionally, considering that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has, like, three times as many courses as, like, any other Mario Kart game. The fact that, like, almost all of them are amazing really is a testament to the quality of that game. But of course I play online with people who just insist on picking the bad courses over and over again. Not naming any names, but you know who you are. Yeah, okay, they definitely improved, like this was not just like, oh they ripped it right out of the double, like they definitely made some improvements to this, like Adding more dinosaurs, adding a little bit, like a... They did a bit of a graphics improvement on this course as well. It definitely looks nicer than it did in Double Dash. Yeah, whoever whoever put this in, very, very good job of porting it over. Why is the camera so close to the cart racer when I finish? Camera doesn't really know what to do. But there we go, 45 points, we're free for free in the circuits, and it's time for Calamari Desert, which will probably be the easiest out of all the tracks. Unless something happens that I'm not anticipating. This version will probably be very boring compared to the Mario Kart 8 version. Where it's different. It's <laughs> Each lap takes you on different parts of the track. But it's still a fun one. I still like this course. Very simple, but effective. As long as the train's not going at like 700 miles an hour. Like it was on a... Um, what was that course? Twin Peaks? I think it was. The one with the giant runaway train and Tony tied up on the train tracks? That one was insane. Nope, train's going at normal speed. Maybe even a little slower than normal. Okay, this time I'm gonna have to slow down for the train, otherwise I'm gonna run right into it. Just like Mario did. Excuse me, you're not passing Dry Bowser. It's a dry course, you're not beating Dry Bowser. Excuse me. Oh! I was about to pick, how is Wario going fast for me? Because he is in the Jet Setter, that's how. This is actually a great course for the Jet Setter. Very few turns, lots of straightaways. Of course, you're still going to be better off in a fast bike. Alright, we're over to everybody. Dry Bowser coming through. Oh, Tumbleweed! That is, that is a new addition. There were definitely not tumbleweeds in the N64 version. Ooh, gold mushroom. I'm not I'm not losing to the train. Oh yeah. I believe I can fly. Oh yes, I beat the train and nobody else did. Everybody else either had to slow down or hit the train. And yet they're still right behind me. They were trying real hard to run me over. Oh, Diddy Kong, you jerk butt. Why is it every time I encounter Diddy Kong, he always, like, passes me, then drops an item right on top of me? Take that, baby. Final lap, and I am just barely in the top half of the racers. This... Looking a little dire. 
Okay, this is looking a lot dire. Thanks, baby. Okay. You know, I need a good power-up to catch up, and a thundercloud is not a good power. -up. Triple mushrooms are nice, but that ain't gonna cut it. I need a little bit more. Oh wait, never mind. No, I don't. This course has got the shortcuts. I should just hold this back behind me, just in case the game decides to spawn in a red shell without giving me a warning. Hey, Diddy Kong. How do you like it? Darn it, didn't hit Diddy Kong. That's okay. We still won first on every race. Which means we hopefully should get a star as a result of this. For a thumbs up and a job well done. Please. What are you gonna give me? I got first place. Yeah, I did. One star. Only one, because it's very strict. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, that would be a guaranteed free stars, I think. But I'll take it. One star is a treasure in Mario Kart Wii. All right, that last circuit was exceptional. All four of the races were really, really great. So here's hoping the next circuit is just as good. I think this time we'll play as the worst character in the whole game. Baby Daisy. The character that literally absolutely nobody wanted. And we're gonna go in the Quacker. The slowest vehicle in the game, I believe, but also has the best excel and the best turning and really good off-road. So here we go, manual mode. We're off now to the Fever Cup, where we've got Coin Heaven, Kinoko Cave, GCN Baby Park, and Desktop Dash. I only know one of these, and it's a hit or miss course. So, here's hoping the free new courses will all be pretty great, and we won't get another Mushroom Peaks on our hands. So what do we got? Coin Heaven, wow, okay, so this looks like... This looks pretty, like a pretty similar track to Cloud Chop Cruise, but... Uh, dang, this looks nice. Definitely trippy, but I, I dig it. This could be really cool. I have also not been in the Quacker in many, many years, so... I might end up be doing really, really badly. This has the... Oh yeah, look at that drift. It's an intra... It's, it's the insidest of inside drift bikes. I don't think a single vehicle in the game has tighter turning than this one. Alright, thus far, this course is looking stellar. Just gotta remember, we've got wheelies on our side. No. Oh, look at that, we're back to max speed almost instantly. Alright, there's already a lot of fake power-up boxes around, isn't there? Okay, this combo's pretty great! I know when Troy hosted his 400cc knockout tournament, the Quacker was the vehicle of choice, because it was actually able to do the courses at really, really fast speeds. So if you don't know what vehicle to use first... Well, I, you can't use this one, because you have to unlock it. But if you're on a brand new course that's got some insane turns, this is probably a good vehicle to use. It is extremely lightweight, but as you can see, we've got a massive breakaway because we know how to take the drifts really tightly. We can wheelie. Uh, if we get hit by something like a blue shell, we don't even slow down for that long because of the incredible excel. And yeah, we're good. wow, okay. This course is awesome. It's very simple, it's short, but it's beautiful and really, really cool theme. These are the custom tracks. I love custom tracks like this. Now, I can tell that whoever made this put their heart and soul into it and really tried to make a great product, and it shows. So, whoever made Coin Heaven did a good job. It would be cool if we could play this in real heaven. If I see you in real heaven, I would like to shake your hand and give you a nice pat on the back. That was a fun one. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that.
We're off, we're, this is a great episode. We've gotten some really awesome courses today. Next we're off to Kinoko Cave. Okay, ooh, like the mushroom moon. I see bouncy mushroom platforms, so that's not great. And also the camera isn't working for <laughs> showing us the track. It's just like, oh, here's the clouds. Okay, all oh, right, we start off, oh, that's a lot of bounce, that's a lot of bouncy mushroom. I think this might be the course where things go downhill. I don't like the bounce of mushroom platforms. I really don't. I don't think that they work well. I'm sorry, there is no way King Boo and the Off-Roader took that turn. Oh my gosh! I am glad I picked the Quacker! What?! Okay, there's clearly some shortcuts in here that apparently King Boo and the Off-Roader is able to take. Oh, what the heck? That's trippy. Okay, I see what you're going for on this stage. I respect it. I just don't like it. <laughs> I think bu bouncy mushrooms are a cool idea that just don't work well in Mario Kart. Having said that, these work better than most because there are enough of them and they're close enough together. Okay, King Boo fell off. You can't tell me that he took it. Because he put it, because the developer put in so many bouncy mushrooms, and they're so close together. Okay, you know, no matter where I go, you're always there. Ouch. Okay, not not exactly where I wanted to go. That's gonna set us back. Missed the power ups. Great. Why does Kimbu have such a breakaway? I didn't even see him last race. Okay. This, if we aim correctly, could be great. I don't think we aimed it correctly, but we're still in second place. Let's see how many shortcuts we can take. Okay, like right there. How are you supposed to take that? Apparently, King Boo was able to turn around completely in midair when he took it first lap. But even the Quacker was not able to take that turn. No! I needed that power up. Oh, King Boo. I can pass it. King Boo didn't win first. Dry Bones won first. You know what? I can live with that. All right. That course, I like the aesthetic of it. It looked very nice, had some cool ideas. Not a huge fan of it. Generally, if a course relies heavily on bouncy mushrooms, I'm not gonna like it. But I at least respect what it was. Okay, now we've got Baby Park. Now, this is a course I'm very split on because I absolutely adore Baby Park in Double Dash, one of my favorite Mario Kart courses, and it's absolute trash in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because they made it smaller than it was in Double Dash, but then threw 12 players on it. Let's see how it fares here. There are still 12 players on it in here, but it looks like they actually might have made it at least a little bit bigger. They also didn't ruin the power-up box placement. Okay, this thus far is definitely... Oh my gosh. Here's the problem. With 12 players all on the same tiny track, it's complete chaos, and you can't... You, it's basically up to luck whether stuff hits you or not. Because the CPUs are just going to throw stuff like crazy everywhere. And with this much stuff in this small an area, you can't really see in time to avoid it. You just kind of have to hope stuff doesn't come at you. So that's why we've got a breakaway lead. Well, not a huge breakaway, but enough of a breakaway that most of the stuff that we're going up against that most of the power-ups aren't being thrown at directly at us, which is nice. I've got to say, I think that the turns are a little bit tight. Because I am in the quacker, and I'm barely making them. Was Bowser? Oh, man! That was close. 
Okay, this is definitely an improvement over the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version, but it still don't hold a candle to the GameCube version. This GameCube version was balanced for, like, four players. You could have eight if you were playing Grand Prix, but if you were playing multiplayer, it was only four players. Four-player Baby Park multiplayer Double Dash was the best Baby Park, by far. Because it was still chaos, but you could at least kind of predict it, and it always made for very fun, entertaining matches. I'll give that one a pass. That one seemed all right. Definitely better than MK8 version, but again, doesn't translate well when there are four players. 12 players. And then we got Desktop Dash. <laughs> oh man, this one looks so cool. The whole race course is like a person's desk. Oh, this is fantastic. The creativity on this one is great. I love it already. Let's hope it just translates well into a map that plays very well. Ooh, look at that mini map. This also reminds me of a Gmod map that I have seen. Oh, that's weird. Okay. I can't... I can't really tell when I need to turn. I also can't tell where the boost panels are because they're not glowing. It's like you draw on... You, you drive on a, something that somebody drew and they're like, Oh yeah, that's the boost panel. U-turn. Thanks for Ray. Oh my gosh, there's a weird remote. Ah, uh, I have to turn right up here, okay. This seems weird. I love the idea behind this level. Really creative, really cool. I love how like all of the walls and stuff are made up of stuff that would be on a person's desk. Really, really, oh my gosh, Kermit the Frog, don't hit me. But it's very hard to figure out where I'm exactly supposed to go. There also definitely seems to be a lot of different uh, potential ways to go. Probably a lot of shortcuts on this level. This might be a fun course to just kind of go around on. Like, outside of a race and just look for shortcuts. Okay, using the mini-map is kind of essential on this level. Okay, that's the ultimate way to go. I'm not sure if that's fast. That doesn't seem faster, but there is a boost. This is a this is a cool course. I'm having a blast just kind of. Oh my gosh, there's a poster from Mario Party that walks on the wall of the room. That's hilarious. Like, what if we went this way? That was a mistake. Why would you? Why would you put that there? It's like the random like. It's like the random square at the end of Peach Beach. Where it's like, hey, you can drive around this fountain for no reason. It's in there, but there's no reason for it to be in there. I see EGAT on the wall, that's cool. <laughs> Mario Kart Wii advertisement on the wall is great. Again, the I love courses like that, that are creative. And it's not just like, hey, what if we made Mushroom Gorge harder? Hey, what if Toad's Factory had more conveyor belts? Like, this is totally... There's The closest you could say is like, oh, the Ribbon Road is kind of similar to this. A little bit. Not really, though. Ow. Oh, that was bad. No. Not King Boo. No, he avoided it all. No. No, Baby Beach. No. 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 No, no, no. Batman, don't run me over. No! Stop gone it. King Boo beat me. No, Baby Peach. Oh, never mind. King Boo won eighth. Okay, no, I can live with that. Got beaten by a baby. I can live with that. And there we go. 54 points. Definitely not the perfect score that we got on the first circuit, but that was still pretty good. Not quite as good as the first circuit, but definitely a solid attempt. I didn't dislike any of those courses, so I consider that a win, even if I didn't super love all of them. Still though, 54 points, A rank with Baby Daisy. That's pretty good. All right, all in all, great courses today. I had fun on all of those tracks, which was great. That was really great. Man, gotta say, uh, CTGP is really stepping up their game as we get into the like the second half of this. I'm not even sure if we're in the second half. I think there's still, after this one, I think there are 30 circuits left. 30 different cups in CTGP that we haven't played. I believe so. I think I counted that right. 
So yeah, there's still like a crazy amount. So we're not even, yeah, yeah, we're not even halfway through CTGP. There's so much content here, which is really cool. It's so awesome that this much stuff has been put into one mod, but it also means that, yeah, it's, it's trying to trying to play on every track is hard enough, and getting familiar enough to be like great at all these tracks, that's gonna take so much time, so. In the meantime, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Next time, we're going off to the next few cups. Should be a lot of fun. Look forward to that next time, and until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Thank you.